In tutorial 19, we will perform a supervised classification on a Landsat image, generate supervised signatures using training samples, and use histograms, scatter plots, and statistics to evaluate our data. This video was produced by Virginia View, a consortium dedicated to promoting remote sensing outreach, education, and research, with funding from the America View Consortium. This video was developed in partnership with the Virginia Geospatial Extension Program and GeoTED. Now we'll use scatter plots to examine the same data. Click on the scatter plots icon. Here I've gone back and changed the color patch of all my water training data so I can distinguish between the different areas. I can see I have some overlap between water 4 in orange and water 2 in gray by looking at the different bands and their scatter plots. I can merge data that overlap by selecting each training area in the sample manager. and clicking the Merge button. Now I can see I have one less water training area since the two were merged into one. If I like the result, I should save my training data. If not, I can revert back to the originally saved data. Now I will highlight all of my training data to compare the scatter plots for my four classes to each other. I can look for overlapping classes. These would be classes containing the same pixel values I can also look for pixel values where there are gaps and then go back and add more training data for these values. When I'm finished examining the scatter plots, I'll close the scatter plots window. Now I'm going to take a look at the statistics for this training data. Again, be sure you have the training data you want to examine selected. Click on statistics and the window will open on the left. I can scroll down and see that the statistics are organized for each training area. The covariance statistic evaluated the correlation of values between the different bands. You don't want to see high covariance. Numbers close to 2,000 are very highly correlated. Close the statistics window and save your training data one last time if you're satisfied with it. The last step before we do our classification is to create a signature file. Click the Signature File button. Navigate to your workspace and save your file. Once the signature file is saved, you can close the Training Sample Manager. And you can clear the training samples from your map with the Clear Training Samples button. Now go to the Classification menu. We're going to use a Maximum Likelihood Classification method. First, open the signature file you just created. It will have a .gsg extension. Rename your new raster. Leave everything else as default and click OK. You'll see your new raster in the map. Note that the number of training areas you created will be the same as the number of classes this raster will have. To create a new raster with four classes, go through the same process you used towards the end of tutorial 18 for your unsupervised classification. You'll start by changing the colors of each of the 17 classes into one of the four class colors we use for our final output. If you can't remember which class is which, reopen the Training Sample Manager and load your training sample file by clicking the Open button. If you named each sample appropriately, you should be able to use this to help you reclassify each of these 17 values, or however many values you have, in your classified data. When you finish changing the colors to your four classes, go to the Spatial Analyst Toolbox and use the Reclassify tool just as you did in Tutorial 18. Assign each of the old classes to one of the four new classes. Your resulting layer should look something like this. Let's take a look at the attribute table for our new raster. You want to create a percent area field and then calculate values just as you did at the end of tutorial 18. You can see that I've already done that here. In tutorial 20, we're going to evaluate the accuracy of our two different classification methods 
used in this tutorial and tutorial 18.